In 13.2, we're going to learn about the integrals of vector functions. Now, basically, in integration, there are two types. One, it is called as indefinite integral, and the second type is called a definite integration. For indefinite integral, you don't see any limits. You don't see lower limits, you don't see upper limit. So if we integrate a vector function, we will get its antiderivative plus a constant vector. But for a definite integral, you can see from here we have lower limit a and upper limit b. So if we are doing a definite integral, then what we need to do is just to integrate each of the component. You can see here the i, j, k. So we integrate the i component, j component, and k component, and apply the upper and lower limits to find this solution. Now, for example, let's say if we want to integrate rt, which is cos t1 negative 2t, using two types of integration. The first type, question A, is to find the indefinite integral, and the second type is to look for the definite integral from 0 to pi. Now, when we look for the uh, the indefinite integral, we just need to integrate 1 by 1. That means we are going to get sine t, which is the antiderivative for cos t, t from 1, and if we integrate negative 2t, we'll get negative t squared. So this is the antiderivative, and then don't forget to plus a constant vector. Next, if we want to find the definite integral, what we need to do is just to integrate s, like in part a. That means we'll get the same vector function, but then we'll apply the lower and upper limit into the vector function, just as how we apply it for a scalar function. That means we're going to apply the upper limit inside the t, which will give us 0 pi negative pi squared, minus the vector from the lower limit, that will give us 0, 0, 0. Therefore, the answer for question B, it will give us 0 pi negative pi squared. Okay, for integration, there is a certain application which we call as initial value problem that will need us to integrate a lot. Now let's take a look at this question. It says here, if the acceleration vector of a hang glider is a a t, which is negative 3 cos t, negative 3 sine t, 2, and the hang glider departed from the point 300 with velocity v0 equals to 3j, find the glider's position as a function of t. Well, you see, from the acceleration, you want to get to the position. But before you get to the position, you need to get the position vector. So from A to R, from A to R, the position vector is R, how many integration that we need to go through? We need to go through the integration twice. So let's see, if we want to integrate twice, we have to make some modification on our constant symbol. Let's see. We integrate A, we integrate negative 3 cos t, we get negative 3 sine t, and then we make integrate negative 3 sine t, we get 3 cos t. Lastly, 2, we integrate, we get 2t. So this is the antiderivative, and don't forget to plus a constant. Here I'm using the symbol of c1 instead of just c, because I know I'm going to integrate twice, so I don't want to get mixed up with the other c. Okay, so I'll just put it as c1. Next, after you get the vt, we need to find out what is the C1. So in order to find out the C1, we need to look at what is the information given here. It says here, V0 is 3J. Okay, so we try to substitute T with 0, okay, for each of the component here, and we get negative 3, 0, sorry, negative 3 sine 0, 3 cos 0, 2 by 0 plus C1. So let's calculate. Negative 3, Multiply with sine 0. Sine 0 is 0. Cos 0 is 1. So here we'll get 0, here we'll get 3, and here we'll get 0. We get 0, 3, 0. 
0, 3, 0 plus C1 is equal to 0, 3, 0 from the question here. Remember, here we get 0, 3, 0 is from the substitution. T equals to 0. And this 0, 3, 0 is from the question. So if we equalize this expression and this vector, we will get C1 is a 0 vector. Therefore, <coughs> By substituting zero vector into the C1, we'll get our velocity as negative 3 sine t, 3 cos t, 2t. So from acceleration, we have already obtained the velocity. Next, we want to get the r, the position vector. So I'll just copy this vector from the previous slide. Okay, this is the vector. We want to get r, so we have to integrate again, and we'll get this rt, which is 3 cos t, by integrating negative 3 sine t, and 3 sine t from 3 cos t, and integrating 2t, you get t squared. So this one is the antiderivative for this vector function. And don't forget to plus a constant. So this is the second time a constant appear, constant vector appear, so I'll just label it as c2. And now we need to find out what is, CT, what is this C2 in order to get the complete vector function for RT. Now let's see, what is the information that we have here? It says the hang glider departed from the point 300. So it means R0 is the vector 300. Okay, so we'll take, we'll take this expression equals to 300 and substitute the t with 0. Okay, so let's see. Cos 0, we get 1. 3 by 1, you get 3. Here, you get 0. Here, you get 0. So we have 3, 0, 0 plus c2 equals to 3, 0, 0 here. And since this vector and this vector are the same, that means our c2 is also a 0 vector. And... Therefore, we get our RT equals to 3 cos T, 3 sine T, T squared. And to answer this question, the position, I'll give the position in the coordinate form. You see the difference of the bracket? Okay, so this one will give the position of the gliders.